Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today's card is a fun fold with a belly band using the adorable Crafting With You bundle that's in the new Stamping Up ca annual catalog that starts on May 2nd and runs till April 30th of 2024. An awesome stamp set with coordinating dies with so many different things. Not only does it cut out these images, it also cuts out like a paper trimmer, a needlepoint circle, some spools of thread or twine, scissors, a basket, a roller. So it's a really fun set that kind of goes over all the different kinds of crafts you and your friends may do. So I'm gonna show you how I made this fun fold that I was able to use almost every image in the set. I used every image but these two flowers and the with love and you inspire me but that could be put on the back but I really love the way this turned out you could also put some of the paper here I, I made my own DSP you could also put something in here but I just kind of liked the fact that this lemon lime twist the new returning in color just kind of pops out at you and gives your eyes a really fun view of everything going on. So let's take a look at how we're going to cut that. We're gonna start out with a piece of lemon lime twist and just keep in mind that that lemon lime twist is a returning in color. So if you don't have that one, you're gonna be able to pick it up on May 2nd and it's gonna have blends and the ink pad, the refill, the paper, some embellishments. But if it, you still kept your paper and you have some, I know there was some pretty ribbon that we used to have with that, you can use it again, yay. So we're gonna take um, this 10 and a quarter by five and a half inch piece. All the measurements for the card I'm making are underneath the YouTube description. It says, visit my blog here. You can press that link. It'll take you over to cindyleebdesigns.com. You'll have additional photos, and you can also see all the products that I use. But right underneath the YouTube description, in that paragraph, you'll see the, uh, the measurements and the the colors and products on everything I use. So we're gonna take 10 and a quarter and we're gonna put it up against the top of the trimmer. This is called wind tape. I get it on Amazon, reads right to left. Not always available. So what we're gonna do is put that 10 and a quarter at the top and we are going to do our first score at two and an eighth. And when I was making up these measurements, when I was drawing them up on my grid paper, I just realized if I wanted it to be four and a quarter, somehow I'd have to get those two pieces on this end. And that's how I got down to 10 and a quarter. So we're going to score with our lighter scoring blade at two and an eighth. A little creaky there. Three and five eighths. We're gonna go three and four eighths three and five eighths. That's two little tick marks after the, the bolder one at three and a half. And we're gonna go there. And then we are going to go to six and five eighths. Two little marks right before, oh, right after also, where here we go. Six and five eighths. Now I have to tell you that it's a little hard to see on my trimmer this way. So I'm going to, do you know what? I'm going to score this on my scoring tool because I realized that's what I did before. Let me grab it. Because when you, sometimes when, right at that part where it's six and a half. So six, six and a half. So right here is six and five eighths. So we might as well just go over here again to two and an eighth, three and five eighths, six and a half, go one more over, six and five eighths, and then we go to eight and one eighth. When I'm working with eighths, I like to use my scoring tool and not my trimmer. This is, well, not so much, there's not really a problem with the trimmer, it's just, it has, these measurements in here, but it's a little tricky to see that eighth mark 
right, the five eighths right there. So I just decided to pull that out. That's why we need all of these fun tools, right? So there is the base of our card. So that is so simple to do. And notice whenever you fold this, they come together to four and a quarter. So to fit into an A2 sized envelope. Okay, so now we're just going to make our own designer series paper for here. Now those two pieces end up coming out to one and seven eighths on that. And if you add those two together, you get 3.75 and then I'm just gonna cut it. So what we're gonna do is bring some scratch, whoop, bring some scratch paper. There we go. And we're gonna bring that three and three fourths, so 3.75, three and three fourths. And we're gonna make our own DSP. And I'm using, I'm still using my old berry burst. So we're going to make our own DSP. So I'm gonna just put my sewing machine on here. And then I'm gonna do my blueberry bushel. And I'm gonna do my Stampin' Cotton Emboss machine. Put another one down here. And let me get that sewing machine back. And just make your own DSP now. Where else did I put a? machine and then it looks like I put one more stamp and cut and emboss machine up here okay we've got some berry burst and some and some oh I looked down and I uh, got some uh, Blueberry bushel, there we go. So then we wanna get in some lemon lime twist here. Okay, and get some yarn in there. I'm kinda of using my cheat sheet here. There's one there. some there some there we're just kind of trying to scatter some different colors around there of course it never turns out exactly the same way each time and then I took the cutest little heart and I pulled out some Azure Afternoon. And I just popped it in there. He's so cute, that little heart. One, two, let's see, how about one here? Okay, so we've got some, and the reason I'm doing this is I'm going with the colors that I can see in that DSP bright and beautiful that's in the suite with the balloon celebration, or beautiful balloons. Okay, so then the next color I pulled out was our Lost Lagoon. Okay, and we want to make sure that our stamp is cleaned off. Once again, I'm still using my old ink pads. The only caveat I would tell you is if it's okay to use your old stamp pads if you have your old ink refills. But if you 
If you, you want to use a new ink refill with a new ink pad. So if you do end up getting them, like say you have um, one, two, yes. Say you have an old ink pad, make sure you use the old ink refill. If you get a new ink pad, like say you have a certain uh, stamping, stamping, up storage if you have the newer ink pads and you want to have them all match then make sure you get a new ink refill to go with the new because chemical the the different um why did i close that the different uh lots of dye and different chemicals that have happened maybe since lost lagoon was around till now you just want to have just match up your ink refill with your new ink pad. So new ink pad, new refill. Older ink pad, you can still use your old one, but don't mix and match them. And I do believe you can tell if it's a new ink, if the little number on the back of the bottle, if it ends with a 7-4, I do believe, then it's newer. But I will find that information out again. Okay, so there we go, we have that. Now, as I told you, we have to cut, we have to cut this down now to one and seven eighths. So we're gonna go in here to one and seven eighths. Put that down and do a nice cut there. And now we have our two pieces that go on the side. There we go. And let's just put them on there. So I'm trying to get this video done before I have to go get a CAT scan of my abdomen today. I had an x-ray at my back doctor and an MRI that showed I had, um, I have, I can stand, which is good because that's what I do to craft, but I have, um, I'm bone on bone from my L5 to my S1, which is causing a lot of pain. I mean, I can get out of the pain and have small, you know, certain positions it doesn't hurt, but for the most part, it does always hurt. Um, and so, but the MRI picked up something in my kidney, which is probably just a shadow of something that I have to go have it checked out just to make sure. So I'm trying to get this done early before I have to go drink barium. Blah. <laughs> Anyhow, um, here we go with our sides here. We're going to design the inside here. You know, that's just a little fill-in information, you know, just so you don't get bored while I'm stamping. Now, I want to get a stamp. I'm also going to use this again here. I'm going to flip it over, though. Haha, <laughs> you can say it was practicing on there. And we're going to stamp that beautiful easel as soon as I find it over here. Okay, ink that up in blueberry bushel. It's funny because the stamp set has that sketchy look to it. So you're thinking, do I have it all inked up? And we're just gonna pop that down at the bottom of that two and three quarters by five and a quarter piece. Just center it, center the easel. Let all the ink absorb into the paper. There we go, oh lovely, lovely. And then we're going to put the crafting Life is better when crafting, which is not a handmade hug. Here is the pretty font. Okay, we're going to ink that up with our berry burst. And you may notice, I'm noticing that my older ink pad is a little drier. But I'm going to see if it works not to have to buy another one. But probably will end up doing that when I'm ordering my 
paper share material. So if you have not taken a look at my paper shares, make sure you do because they are a great value to get a sampling of everything out of the catalog. And I pay the shipping to you as a, as a gift. Okay, so I just popped on the pencils and the, I mean the paintbrushes into this basket. Adds the other colors into into the um, into the card. Now I do want to. Now this is going to be. We're just going to get this out of the way. I want to tell you a little tip, which I've done in most of my videos. But if this is your first time watching a video, I will repeat it. They just have a sweet little stamper from Alaska, who would always tell me. I don't like it when people keep repeating the stuff I already know. And I said, well, Norma, you just have to remember that it might be the first time somebody's watched the video and doesn't know that information. So here we go. I want to show you how I get essentially almost, almost a perfect white cut out around the image. Since we are dyes, you can't really see around them. So what I will do is I will stamp my image. So I'm gonna ink this up. So what I do is I stamp my image. Okay. And then I go and I just put this on a piece of white paper, pretend there's white under that. So I just go die cut this pop that out and use it for later. Um, but now I have what the die cut will cut. I come back to my image and I lay it down right around. So now I know exactly where it would go. Now, of course, I'm on my Big Shot or my stamp and cut and emboss machine, wherever your die cutting machine is. And then I can put this die back into that hole and it cuts exactly around it. I tape it down, roll it through, and you'll get a perfect cut, as perfect as perfect can be, you know, with human, with humans. But um, that is my way to get a nice white one because the times where I think I can see around it, like whenever you go to put this down, you think you have it perfect, and then I die cut it, and then it's a little bit off and it like cuts right through there. So that is my little trick there. The other trick is to always put back in your dies or put them on a magnetic surface or something so that you don't lose them. Look at all these fun dies in here. Now, the next die we're going to use is this fun needlepoint die here. Now, this die, when you die cut, I have a sample here. it ends up die cutting out the middle of the circle. So this might be an easy way to do it. So you can see that I die cut this one when I did the inside and I did this. So I die cut the berry burst so that I ended up with these two pieces. So I'd have the outside. And then I went ahead and stamped this on my white and I came back and I was able to get the perfect um, cut from it instead of trying to stamp inside it because it's a red rubber stamp as well. So that is how I'm gonna build that up. And then I can definitely use this somehow for something. I could either put a die cut on here or I could um, stamp and use white embossing powder. So that's something I could do. But this is a cute one. And see, now you're adding in somebody who does any kind of um, needlepoint and fine uh, stitching and stuff like that. So. And you know, it has these cute little spools there. Oh my gosh, I just love this set. And there we go, so we don't lose anything. So, we are going to put these paintbrushes on the back of, and I'm just going to pull out some snail I had here. And I'm just gonna kind of put them off to the side, like they're leaning in that basket and we're gonna put them here. Now, I was showing my friend this card, you know, sending pictures, and I was trying to decide, I was just kind of showing her the layout of it, and she had mentioned, I said, I'm not done yet with this inside of the easel. I think I'm gonna put 
these flowers in here, just like on the stamp set shows, and put the flowers in. She goes, no, 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 leave it there where they can write their message, like happy birthday or get well or thinking of you. So I'm going to leave that empty, but you could also put a two and three quarters by five and a quarter back here. And if you wanna put you inspire me, which I may do that off camera before we, um, so you might see posting of the pictures there. So you can put something on the back there, or you could put the You Inspire Me here, but then it kind of, I like the sentiment. I didn't want another sentiment there. So we're gonna stick that right there. It's coming together. Until It's not coming together actually until we have a belly band on there. And I simply just used a one and a quarter, and I think it was 11, and I wrapped it around and adhered it right. You can see the little flap there. I like to wrap my belly bands, um, which I actually am going to cut right now and show you how I do this. I should have had it cut already. I just didn't realize I didn't have that done. Okay, so here we go. I like to just play around with folding it because you don't want it scored necessarily because then it gets too tight. So just kind of put it there, fold it over. And then you can see where you have a lot of overlap and that's just where you can come in and do a little trimming with your scissors so you don't have as much of an overlap. And you're gonna cover that up with that needle point anyhow. And sometimes I, after I make those initial ones, I'll go back over and fold it. And it seems like I have a crisper edge. Like this is a little, you know, rugged. And then if I flip it around, it doesn't have that rugged edge. So that's another little, not as much, you know, little tip. So what you're gonna have to do is put this together here. Stay flat. I know you have a lot of folds in there. And we're gonna put that together so that it reaches. And I'm just going to take a little bit of tear and tape to hold that together because going to be needing to have a good it's going to need to have a good strong adhesive holding that belly band okay back up here there we go and we've got that belly band. And then I wanna show you how I put this together. Now, I could just kind of adhere this on here. Oh, DSP. here. So let's get the glue out again and then I'll show you that little trick to keep that circle together. I guess you, you're probably already knowing what I did. <laughs> okay now you've got this great paper, great DSP. Do you know what is a little wonky here? But I don't care. We're covering this up here. It's a little bit off on the... okay. There we go. And then we're going to keep this together by punching out a two inch circle. Right now these aren't available, but they will be on our online exclusives coming back. So we need to find where I put that piece of white that I wanted to demonstrate for punching out a piece of white. 
I'm going to use this circle that I know will fit in here. Punch out a two inch circle. There we go, and paper goes flying. And then I have to bend over <laughs> with my bad back. <laughs> so what I did was I took the back side of our, why can you never find what you, oh, here it is. Why can you never find on your craft tech table what you need? So I went ahead and put a little bit of glue on the back side of the needlepoint ring. Embroidery ring, that's what it's called. Embroidery ring. So I just put some glue on there. And then I took the two inch circle and put that on there. And then I put the handmade hug in there. And you can pop that right back in here. I did keep it strong. No, did I keep? No. I turned the little top of the thing a little to the side because my creative team that I always ask questions to, they mentioned they like this straight and not turned this way, but I didn't want this thing right here in the middle of the card. I actually could have made that a little bit um, a little tighter, but that's okay. There we go. So we're going to put that on there. So let me grab a little more bit of snail here. Whatever adhesive I end up finding laying on my desk, I still have snail left. Okay, and then you're just going to center that and have the words sending you a handmade hug. Oh, and then like I said here, you can put another piece here. Notice I, I must have been stamping and I got some blueberry bushel on there. So I may try to fix that. But you can um, write on the inside or write on the back side. But this also is a lighter color, so you could easily write on here as well. So isn't that cute with this little belly band? I love all the fun colors I used um, on this card you know, being inspired by the DSP, having all those bright, fun colors in it. So let me get this belly band on here. Just slide that down there. This one's a little bit tighter, which is nice. So there you go. A fun little fun fold where you make your own DSP. Of course, you could pick any striped or any pattern. Just pull the colors out of your DSP to stamp your different images. I think this is going to be a winner. You've got, you know, the people who crochet and knit, the people who paint, the people who sew, the people who stamp. Just adorable. Ha! Huh. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to text me or call me at 724-323-2296. You can email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. You also can subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can subscribe to my blog. If you subscribe to my blog, which is where I update all the inf current information from stamping up sales, new promotions, and all my blog posts, if you subscribe, you will get an email each time that I post that email is coming from WordPress, not from me personally. So if you have any private information you want to share with me, it might be, you know, credit card information. It might be a certain question you have or, you know, a lot of us um, share our lives together. and We might be just checking up on each other. Make sure you email me personal information to cindyleeb at gmail.com, not the blog post you get that I posted because that will become public. So just wanted to warn you on that one. One time somebody did text me to tell me about their bowel habits and it came public. <laughs> I mean, they were, how are you doing? Are you still sick? And um, all of that came up on my blog. So anyhow, there you go. Thanks for buzzing by friends. May 2nd starts the new catalog.